Hello, everyone. Good morning. And it is a happy day. How have you guys been? How is the weather treating you? Hope each and every one of you is having the fun side of the day. Back here in Philadelphia, the weather has changed. Trust me, it is hot today. Uh, today is indeed a good day. Um, we have a wonderful speaker today. Just sit, uh, sit tight and flow according to the tune of our music. That's the presentation. Uh, I can see quite a number of people um, coming in, some familiar names. You guys are highly welcome. We always appreciate your, 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 your presence and your participation. And like I always do, I always give a two minutes to allow most of you guys to come in before we start the business of the day. Hey, everybody, as we start to get things underway, go ahead and let us know what city you're joining us from. Let, let us know what city you're joining us from. It's always intriguing to see. Sometimes we get people from outside the local area, and sometimes uh, we get people from outside the U.S. So let's see what we've got. Villanova, Erie, Pennsylvania. Hello to Philadelphia. Villanova, Erie. Okay, Erie's a little bit further away. Uh, I, by the way, I'm in uh, Orlando, Florida, a uh, little rural valley. I'm not sure where that is, and I don't know where Buffalo Mills is either. But uh, great to have everybody with us. And Buffalo Mills is in Philly. Yeah. Let's, uh, oh, we got Jody from Pittsburgh. And you, what you could also do, because this will help me do a better job for you, is let me know what kind of a business you're in. If you're in business, and if you're not, that's okay. Let me know that too. Uh, Jody's with aspire to find a solution.com. Ghost writer, content strategist, bag maker, handyman services. Very cool. Flemington, marketing major. Awesome. Hey, Jalen. So you can see we're live. And, um, Garba, I'm ready whenever you are. We can just let people continue to file in and let us know where they're joining us from. Yes, please. Um, a quick one before we start the main event of the day. As usual, my name is Garba S. Yahaya, and I'm a training coordinator of the Temple Small Business Development Center. Uh, the Temple Small Business Development Center helps small business start and grow. Uh, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting and a variety of low to low cost webinars. Uh, we are proud to be part of a nationally accredited network of the small business development centers, which has over a thousand networks across the United States. We're here this afternoon for a webinar on Get More Opens with great subject lines. Uh, a copy of the PowerPoint and the link to the recording will be sent to all the attendees. Being a webinar, all the attendees have been muted. However, we always encourage you guys to drop your questions on the chat box. Uh, without further ado, like I said a few minutes ago, please allow me to welcome my wonderful speaker, even as he takes over the floor for the presentation. Ken, you are highly welcome. Well, thank you so much, Garba. And hello, everybody. If you're on the East Coast, good afternoon to you. And if you're not on the East Coast, then it could still be morning. It could actually be evening. I actually did an event yesterday uh, where uh, we had people from literally across the globe from British Columbia, Canada, around the world to New Zealand and every place in between. So wherever you're joining us from, hello and good day to you. And if you haven't already know, uh, let us know what city you're joining us from, go ahead and let me know that. As Garba mentioned, if you can go ahead and use the chat box, that would be perfect. And uh, let me know what kind of a business you're in, or if you are still studying, awesome too. Uh, I would love to have you participate and and offer up some comments and questions along the way. I do watch the chat. I don't watch the Q&A. Um, so use the chat. And I, if a question comes in that I know I'm going to get to, I will get to it right away. Um, if it's something that's a little bit off topic, that's OK, too. Uh, we'll go ahead and get every question answered for you before we close out this afternoon's session. 
so we've got people mostly from around Pennsylvania, not too terribly surprising, and uh, great to have everyone here. So this session is called Get More Opens with Great Subject Lines. We're going to give you the tips and tricks that the experts use to get those emails that are being sent out opened. Um, I am, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a few minutes, but what I will let you know up front is I'm a certified email marketing expert. Uh, I've been working with a company called Constant Contact for 15 years. Um, the person who identifies themselves as small biz Philly uh, is asking a question in the Q&A. I just happened to notice that the Q&A thing was lit up. And the question was, could these tactics also be used for creating LinkedIn headlines for articles? Yes, 100%. Uh, if you would, though, go ahead and use the chat for anything else that you want to ask, because that's what I'll be taking a look at. All right, so I'm a very frequent speaker. I've done other events for the SBDC at Temple University. Uh, I'm a regular speaker at trade shows and chambers of commerce and SCORE. And if you've attended any one of my sessions in the past, go ahead and use the uh, raise hand control on the toolbar. Let me know if you've uh, attended one of my sessions before. Oh, Sitan, I see you. Uh, welcome. Glad you're here. And I see a bunch of others lighting up as well. So uh, I always like to start my sessions with this question, which is, why are you here today? And I think I know the answer. It's because you want to make more money. Well, we're going to talk about email marketing, and email marketing's ROI, return on investment, is on average 36 to 1, meaning for every dollar you invest in an email marketing campaign, on average, you should get $36 back. That's way beyond any other marketing tool out there. It's nearly three times the ROI of social media, which makes email marketing undeniably the single best tool you have to consistently grow your business. Now, this session can help you if you're just starting out with email marketing, or maybe you're somewhat experienced with email marketing, but you're not getting at least $36 back for every dollar you spend on it. Or maybe you're very experienced with email marketing, but you want more than $36 back for every dollar you spend. If you're any of these people, then you are in the right place. So let's help you get more money. Now, you'll be able to get a copy of today's presentation. I know the SBDC is going to send out a handout, which I provided in advance. But you can also get it by going to this URL, penisemail.com slash sbdc or use your smartphone and click that qr code and that'll take you to the same place it'll ask you just for your name and an email address and then it'll give you access to download a bigger file than what you'll get from the sbdc and by the way if you miss out on any of these things or you're a little bit distracted and you want to shoot an email to me or text me, my contact information is at the bottom of every single slide. So not to worry, uh, you'll have access to anything you need. And I encourage you to ask questions along the way. And if you have something that comes to mind after our session, feel free to reach out to me. All right, this is Get More Opens with Great Subject Lines. And I'm going to invite you to remove all distractions because we're only together for a short amount of time. So if your smartphone is blowing up, you're getting texts or you see emails coming in, I can assure you they will still be there an hour from now and you'll be able to get to them then. So are you ready? Well, let's go ahead and get started. Listen, just the other day, I got an email from a shop. It was the Concord Cheese Shop. And this is the email they sent with a subject line that said, the latest news for you. Now, that's not a bad subject line, but it's not doing much to inspire me to want to open the email. 
regardless, I opened up the email because I knew who they were. I opened up the email because of a relationship that I have with that business. Now, for many individuals, for many individuals, businesses, organizations, getting someone to open your email starts by building and having a relationship that's engaging to them in the first place. So that's why your from name is so important. Did you know that over 40% of people look at the from or sender name first before they decide to open an email? So to start with, you've got to make sure your from information is recognizable to your audience. And then the subject line is what should pique their interest and let them know what to expect in the email. And by the way, uh, you saw that QR code and the URL I provided a little bit earlier. If you use either one of those, as I mentioned, you're going to be added to our mailing list. And not very long after we end this session, I'll be sending you an email and you'll see what the subject line is. And I'm pretty confident that that's going to pique your interest and get you to open up that email. All right. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda for this session, and you'll see what I'm going to cover today. I'm going to start out by talking about the basics, which makes a, what makes a good subject line. Then I'm going to talk about some trends that we're seeing in subject lines. And then last but not least, I'm going to talk about some ideas for getting creative. Now, before we continue, a little introduction. My name's Ken Countess. I'm a 40-year marketing veteran. I've worked for four Fortune 100 companies. You see the logos of three of them below. I've been a SCORE partner for quite a few years. Uh, I've been helping businesses just like yours grow by teaching them how to do email marketing the right way. I'm a general marketing consultant, but we always like to start with email because everybody checks their email. My company name is kenisemail.com. It's a division of the Countess Group, which next week celebrates 22 years in business. I'm Constant Contact's top worldwide trainer. If you're familiar with the name Constant Contact, you know that they are one of the leaders in email and digital marketing. All right. So let's talk about the basics that you need to know. We'll talk about the basics of a good subject line. And once again, here's the QR code and the URL that you can use, and that'll give you access not only to the, the entire slide deck that, you're, that we're going through, but also uh, within about, call it 20 minutes of the end of this session, I will be sending you an email that has some additional resources. Uh, I see a question uh, here. Uh, let me just get to these. Uh, there's a question, uh, will, the, will this be available on replay? It is being recorded, so you should be able to get access to it. All right. The inbox is a busy place, and many people are reading their emails on a mobile device, and that means that your subject line and your pre-header text needs to be short and sweet. People are scanning their inbox and they're making quick decisions. So you need to get the point across quickly and catch their attention right away. Who here knows what I mean when I use the term pre-header text? Go ahead and use the toolbar uh, in your window and raise your hand to let me know if you know what that pre-header is. Jody's like, yeah, I know what that is. Anybody else? Maybe you're looking for the raise hand tool. Maybe not. Maybe Jody's the only one who knows. Well, that's good because I'm going to let you know exactly what that is. The pre-header text is that little bit of text that shows up directly below or after the subject line in the inbox. It helps to catch the attention of your audience. And I suggest that you use it as an extension of your subject line. Now, the preheader text typically pulls in a little bit of text that's in the body of your email. Within Constant Contact, 
it's a separate field. So you can better control the tax that people see in that area. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about many different examples and tips that you can try in your subject line. It's important that uh, it's important to know that these same tips and ideas can be applied to your preheader text. And for those who are interested in using it in other places, like LinkedIn headlines, for instance, it's perfect for that as well. Now, there are still a few email programs that don't show the preheader text, yes. But if you do have it, I encourage you to fill in that preheader text field. Otherwise, you'll be missing out on an opportunity to provide a little bit more insight on why people should be opening up your email. It's a common question I see, so I wanted to make sure that I addressed it up front. Now, one of the things that you want to be thinking about when I mention short and sweet, it's that the subject line should be no more than four to seven words. The reason for that is on particularly on smartphones, the subject line gets cut off or truncated after 30 or 31 characters, depending on what type of smartphone you're using. Uh, iPhones cut off anything after uh, uh, space 30 or 31, and that includes spaces, by the way. And on an Android, it's about 40 characters. The preheader text, which comes after the subject line, you ought to be limiting that to five to eight words. And the subject line is at the top in bold, as you can see in this example. The preheader text is what's showing up on a mobile just below that. Now, because you have a limited amount of space and time to get people's attention, that also uh, means that there are a few things that I recommend you avoid. Because I often see a lot of marketers putting the company name in the subject line. I don't recommend doing that. It's already in your from name field and even probably in your email address if you send from your own domain. It's too repetitive and it takes up room for other wording that could get people to open up that email. So for example here, don't waste space with your company name. The example I'm showing you here is a special offer from French Consulting. Well, French Consulting is sending the email. They know that already. Don't waste space with the word newsletter. When people are receiving something from you, having the word newsletter in your subject line is really giving you, uh, uh, it's providing wasted space meaning that you want to use that little bit of real estate, is what we call it online, you don't want to waste that real estate using words that are pretty obvious to begin with. Give people a reason to open up your email. Peak their curiosity. Show your email's relevance to them. So don't repeat information like you see here. Last chance to get your baby essential deals. Last chance to save. You've already said last chance once. So once again, give them a reason to open up that email. Now, let's take a look at a few simple ideas for your subject lines, and then we'll get into a little more depth. One idea is to make your readers laugh with a joke or a pun for a landscaping company, for instance. It could be, calm down, Mother Nature. Another is to try to incorporate numbers. Numbers attract attention as our brains are naturally wired or drawn to digits. So try something in this example, like five tips for perfectly grilled ribs. Another idea is to be inquisitive and ask your readers a question like, are your investments working for your business? Now, with this one, you'll notice that in a mobile view, the subject line is getting cut off. That's what I meant by making sure that you restrict your subject line to 30 or 31 characters, including spaces. So in this example, I would make it shorter. I would do something like saying three questions to maximize returns. And that way it fits better in the mobile view. 
You can also try to pull at their heartstrings by using an emotional subject line, like take five minutes to help animals in need. Now, this is going to be really important for those who have nonprofits. However, many for-profit businesses can use this too, especially when you start thinking about holiday promotions or celebrations with loved ones. And this one is a little bit longer as well, so I would suggest making it more concise by eliminating any unnecessary words or by rephrasing. I would rephrase this one to say, take five minutes to help. Another option is to create a sense of urgency or a fear of missing out. Fear of missing out, we abbreviate to FOMO. You might have heard that before. In this example, it would be last chance, register by Friday, where they're trying to get people to register for a training. And in this example, I'd recommend changing the pre-header text so that it's not saying something so similar. For the pre-header, I might say classes are almost full. Now, these are all simple and pretty straightforward, and I've seen some that turn out to be great performing emails. Are there any other straightforward subject lines that you've seen get really good results and working with your clients? Go ahead and drop those in the chat, and I'll take a look at the chat while you're doing that. Looks like we're in good shape keeping up with the chat stuff. So here are some other examples. Fear of missing out subject lines. One might be, uh-oh, your subscription is expiring. Or maybe a curiosity subject line like nine facts about the housing market. Or maybe something like a vanity subject line like age-defying beauty tricks. You still with me? Because your subject line will change for every email, let's take a look at some different types of emails and types of subject lines that we've seen. So for welcome emails, these are a couple of the ones that I've seen. Many are pretty straightforward to say thank you and make people feel welcome. This first one says a thank you for our subscribers. That's from REI. For those of you who entice people to sign up for your list or some kind of offer, uh, you might put something brief about it in the subject line like this one. Enjoy your coupon. We can't wait to see you. Now, here are a few examples for birthday and anniversary type emails. This first one uh, it says, happy birthday, Stephanie. This one's on us. And then for anniversaries, of course, you can celebrate a wedding or a membership anniversary. But in this instance, it's a yearly reminder to renew membership with your membership is running out soon, renewed today. Here are a couple of examples for offers and promotion emails you might send. The first one celebrates a national holiday. Celebrate National Oyster Day beginning August 4th. And then the second one is trying to make the audience feel special with the phrase email exclusive and then letting people know when blueberry picking starts. Now, these are some examples uh, from inboxes, but I would try to shorten some of these so they show better on mobile. And one thing I'd like to note with your offers and promotions is to be careful with the frequent use of percentage and dollar off amounts in the subject line. Your audience might become immune to seeing those in, uh, if you have them in many of your emails. And plus, your audience likely sees a ton of these in their inbox every day. So in some instances, I think people are, uh, you, you should be looking to rephrase things so that they don't uh, look just like everybody else's. You want to stand out in the inbox. Let me move on and talk about event emails. And there are a variety of different emails that can fall into this category. And of course, there are save the date emails you could send, invitations and reminders so they don't forget, and then after event follow-ups. Now, this first example is a save the date for the event and let people know they can save on tickets. The second one, 
says, OMG, last chance to save on Conex tickets. This actually came to my inbox from a B2B company. And I think for a lot of B2Bs, especially, this can feel like you're breaking the rules. B2B subject lines tend to be very formal and basic, using silly wording like, OMG, last chance to save on tickets, or even boom shakalaka, let's get started. That can really spice things up and attract attention. You just really need to think about your brand, your brand personality, and the audience that you're sending to, because you may be surprised about how stepping out of the box can really help you. Now, some other phrases you might want to think about for event emails that aren't represented here are don't forget, or register today, or don't miss this. And for some event emails, you might want to invoke a fear of missing out and even some urgency too. There are tons of other types of emails that you can send, but let's lump all of these together. Let's put them in a category for helpful emails that provide value to your subscribers. And these examples are pretty straightforward. The first one is referencing a helpful white paper for nonprofits on fundraising. And it says, new white paper, explore the ROI of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising now. Now, this is a, another example of a subject that's a little long. I'd probably remove the first words in the brackets and try ROI of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And the second example talks about eight healthy foods that can prevent weight loss. And I want to give a special shout out to some specific nonprofit examples. For nonprofits, your subject lines can especially pull at your subscribers' heartstrings. And there have been a few that have already been sprinkled out through the examples I've shown you, but here are just a few more nonprofit examples together. From a shelter, there's a thanks for adopting subject line with some personalization of the cat's name that was adopted. Now, I really like that subject line. I'd revise the pre-header text to say something else. I don't know about the exact topic of the body of the email, but if they were including some new pet activities, I'd say something short about that in the pre-header area. And this last one was from more of a newsletter that focused on one of the articles that was a success story of someone they've helped. I want to point out that the pre-header text here is unless you're on their email list, the pre-header might not make sense. The taste, an annual that they even run to benefit the food bank. So this part really goes back to the relationship that they've built with their subscribers. Uh, by the way, I see a couple of things are showing up in the Q&A. Please go ahead and use the chat. That's what I'm keeping an eye on. And I'm happy to answer any questions that come up there. All right. So let's uh, move ahead. At this point, you've seen a variety of good examples, but it's also important to talk about some don'ts for your subject lines too. According to anti-spam laws around the world, your subject lines can't be misleading or deceptive. And now I know you probably don't try to be de deceptive, but sometimes email marketers try to get a little more creative. And then they don't realize how a subject line could be misleading. And if people feel misled about opening your email, there's a chance they'll mark your email as spam. And that's something you don't want to have happen. So let's look at a few examples of what not to do. Don't try to imply a continuing conversation just to get people to open or uh, add abbreviations for forwarding or reply. Watch out for urgency. Sometimes people make an email sound more urgent than it really is. Had to hit the mute button there. Another example is when a subject line is deceptive about the reader's actions. I've seen some examples where people use April Fools and use a subject line that implies somebody took an action that they didn't really take. These are the kinds of things that can help people feel 
misled by you, you want to build trust and credibility with them. Lenore is asking about the definition of preheader. The preheader, Lenore, is the little bit of text that shows up just under a subject line. And I'll show you a few more examples of that later. And it looks like Deb is taking notes uh, in a Google Doc. Awesome, Deb. Thanks so much for doing that. I'm sure that'll be of great help to the people who are at this session. All right. So let's check in with you. If you're still with me, put a seven in the chat box. Erica's first one in. Oh, boy. Here come the sevens. They are just flying in here. Good. Thank you. All right. So listen, people are asked often about how to avoid spam filters. The first thing is that you want to make sure you're building your list the right way and not spamming people. You don't want people to mark your email as spam. You also want to avoid doing some things that can trigger it to land in a spam folder. You can also scan your spam and junk folders every once in a while to see what's landing in there and then avoid some of the common things that you see there. So here's a visual of the junk folder in one of my inboxes, and you can see some real spam in here using the words free and guarantee and the word spam and writing in all upper caps or excessive punctuations and symbols like exclamation points and a bunch of question marks and percentage signs and dollar signs. Those are the kinds of things that can help you get in the spam folder. Let's move on. <clears throat> Let's talk about the trends for writing great subject lines. One of the things that I'm seeing overall in marketing is personalization. That is a great thing for you to be focusing in on. And you'll see if you do sign up for my email list, you'll get a very personalized email coming to you not long after we end this session. There are a few things that you can do to make your subject lines feel personal to catch your subscribers' attention. The first is using your or you and personalizing with their first name. One stat we've found is that when the first word in your subject line is you or your, open rates increase significantly. For B2B stats, that shows an increase of 20% in open rates. And for business to consumer company emails, open rates increase even a little bit more. So this first example says, are your Google ads not showing? This could be why. That's an example of using you or your in the first one or two words of the subject line. I like the second example, too, as they combine the subscriber's first name with the word your to make it feel more personal, saying, Rachel, your personalized concert lineup is here. Now, depending on the topic of your email, you could also personalize the subject line by adding in some other details that are known about your subscribers to make it feel relevant. Now, these subject lines are a little bit long, especially for viewing on mobile. But remember, it all goes back to the three things that people see in the inbox that play a role in getting people to open your email. The from name, the subject, and the pre-header text. Together, they're going to have the biggest impact. And Lenora, as I promised you, these are subject line and pre-header. Where the pre-header complements the subject line, it gives someone an added incentive to open up that email. Now, the next trend is the use of emojis. And I've seen a lot of questions and even some hesitance about using them in the past. Some marketers feel that they might increase spam filtering or even feel that they may not be appropriate for their audience. But based on research, subject lines that trigger spam filters using uh, emojis, nope. Emojis do not put you in the spam folder. It's the subject lines themselves that are likely the trigger, not the emojis. So if you have a good subject line, adding a good supporting emoji can make the subject line even better. 
But if your subject line is already bad with common spam filtering uh, triggers, adding an emoji can only make it worse. Um, Lenore is asking, how do you make the pre-header show in MailChimp? MailChimp uh, is a little bit different in the way they operate, Lenore. Uh, our preference is constant contact because it's very obvious where you can put the pre-header in. For an email service provider that does not provide a pre-header uh, field, the only way to really do that is to use the very first line of text in the body of the email as pre-header text. Uh, it doesn't work quite as well as having an actual pre-header field. So if you're using MailChimp, it's a good platform, uh, but I would recommend that you try another tool. And once again, I recommend Constant Contact. And Deb says, yeah, MailChimp does have pre-header options. They're pretty easy to set up. Most email service providers do provide pre-header options. It's important to know that emojis don't work for every business or industry or even for every email that you send. You may find that your audience doesn't really understand them or that they just don't work with your messages. Now, have any of your clients used emojis and had success? Or have you seen subject examples that didn't work out well? Go ahead and put them in the chat. And Tanya says, hey, Emojipedia is a great resource for uh, emojis. I use that myself. And I also do an email campaign for my wife, who's a life coach. And we go to Emojipedia all the time. Other examples, by the way, one specifically that worked well was a diet wellness company that was promoting their diet and added in a banana emoji and an apple emoji, and that really accented their message. I would avoid using things like a siren or flashing light emoji if the urgency isn't there. That can be deceiving. Now, I suggest testing the use of emojis and really any of these ideas that I've shared with you thus far. And that's where A-B testing comes in. An A-B test allows you to write two different subject lines uh, with the same email body and see which one performs better. So in this example, you can see an email that was written that has two different subject lines that are being tested out one with an emoji and one without. It's a very easy way to grab some quick data and understand what's working best for you. Tony says, I think if you use emojis, you should make sure they're easily readable and that they mean what you think they mean. I see a lot of questionable emoji use. Tanya, you're right on the money. I see the same thing. But let's take a look here at some subject lines that have emojis. The first example uh, includes three different emojis to talk about recipes. And you could see that they're pretty relevant. The next one asks a question and includes the eyes which caught attention about the offer for free shipping. And this last one is using a camera emoji to support their email about a photo contest. Now, Let's talk about best practices. Don't use the same emoji every time. Don't use them in every subject line and make sure that they support your message. And I think this goes back to thinking about the brand personality that you want to convey and considering the type of email you're sending as well. And by the way, it's important to note that all devices and email programs render emojis differently. They may show up as a different color, or they may even change shape a bit. And for some, they won't show up at all. So I want to suggest that you send some test emails to see how it displays through a di few different email programs to make sure they're still supporting your message. If you're using Constant Contact, they have a, a product, an add-on that's called Inbox Preview, which will allow you to see the previews in different inboxes from right inside your account. Now, I wouldn't say that the next one's quite a trend, 
but I've been seeing more subject lines use brackets. And this is a way to put focus on a word or a small phrase to make it stand out. A lot of B2B industry folks will use this uh, to focus on words like guide or ebook or webinar or something similar. Uh, Jody's asking, is there a source to tell you which providers change emoji? One of the things you can do, uh, Jody, is if you go to Emojipedia, uh, that will show you how different emojis will show up in different inboxes. So for instance, it'll show you what an emoji might look like in Outlook versus Apple versus an Android. And that's a good that's a good way to test and see how it, how emojis that you're thinking about working might show up. The thing about using brackets is it's important to keep the words in brackets to six letters or less. Now, let's move on so I can talk about some additional tips to help you get a little bit more creative. You've seen already many examples where being straightforward with your subject line can be pretty effective. I recommend you try to be uh, pretty straightforward in your subject lines for the most part, but I do think there are some opportunities where you might want to spice things up a bit. You can put a focus on a special promotion or featured content, but most of all, you don't want to look like you're trying too hard. And don't forget about testing. Along with everything else, you want to try something new. Make sure you're testing out these sets of ideas. The first idea is alliteration, where you'll repeat the same first letter of each word. So for instance, here, six season saving secrets, or what French consulting tried, which was top trends to try today. And this next idea is called chunking, where you don't write a sentence. It kind of feels like you're breaking the rules on this one. If you're struggling with subject lines that are too long, it can also help to keep things short, but also stand out because it won't be following the normal structure. And by the way, while we're on this part, I'm going to throw something in the chat here now that you're welcome to try out. This is AI. Uh, it's a tool that I use. It's called Jasper. I've been using it for three years already. It does a great job of helping you create subject lines that stand out. I use it just about every week when it comes to the email campaigns that I send out. But it's not only for subject lines. It'll help you write blogs, write articles. If you're at Temple University, I'm sure you know all about AI. Um, that's the tool I use. And that special link will give you a free five-day trial and also 10,000 bonus words to really help you dive in and dig it out. It's really an awful, uh, uh, an outstanding tool. All right, let's move on a little bit. Uh, in fact, let me cover this one in a little bit more detail, um, where I talked about chunking, where you're kind of breaking the rules, it feels. So Alloy Apparel uses new tops, new jeans, new outfits. French Consulting, again, you plus us equals more clients for you. You can also refer to pop culture or famous lines. ABC Candies uses Life is Like a Box of Candy. I know you know where that's from. Of course, it's from Forrest Gump. Or Dave's Halloween Superstore. We know what you did yesterday. That references a movie from the 90s. Uh, the subject line actually referenced the sale the day before, and the email was asking the customer to provide feedback on their experience. David says, hey, when doing an A-B subject line test, what's the minimum size list that you can use to get statistically significant? Your, that's a great question, David. Your minimum size list should be at least 500 to 1,000 people. If you're not quite that big, that's okay. But if we're thinking about statistically significant, uh, email lists that are a thousand people or more work best. And in that way, you could send that A-B test to 10% of your list, and you'll have a fairly significant number that are getting that subject line. And, getting, and you'll get to see instantly how each of the subject lines is doing. And 
it'll be set up so that the system you're using will automatically send an email with the winning subject line to the balance of the list after the amount of time that you've set. I will typically, because my emails go out, generally speaking, about 1.20 in the afternoon on Tuesdays, if you're on my list and I'm using an A-B list test, uh, I will send that email out about 7 o'clock in the morning, set the timer for six hours, and at the end of six hours, again, about 1 o'clock, 1.20 in the afternoon, whichever subject line had the greatest amount of opens, that's what the system will send uh, to the rest of the list. Uh, Lenore is asking if you have way fewer subscribers than 500, can you hold off on A-B testing? I would try it anyway, Lenore. Uh, it's, we're talking about statistical significance, but if you're not sure what might work best, go ahead and use the A-B test. Just know that your results may be skewed if the list is a little bit too small, but there's no harm in trying. All right, if you're still with me, Put an eight in the chat box this time. Kelsey, you're first in. Lenore, okay, we got you folks are engaged. This is really awesome. All right, let's uh, talk about the next part here, and that is using power words to trigger a response. This next thing I want to touch on uh, is important as well. Remember how I mentioned the first few words are the most important? Well, a power word at the beginning can really help you stand out. Power words help you trigger a psychological or emotional response from your email message. So they can help you persuade your audience to do something. Power words typically fall into a few different categories. Here on the screen, I listed four. There are actually many other categories and power words within those categories out there. So at this point, I want to do a recap. And these are the three major items that I want you to be thinking about. Number one, remember the importance of your relationship with your subscribers. Start with a solid from name. Change your subject line for each email to make it relevant to the content of that email. And don't forget about pre-header text. Always use it as an extension of your subject line. Straightforward uh, office subject lines uh, are, they work great and, and they help you to start to try out the use of your contacts names and even emoji to see if you can increase your open rates. And then last but not least, you've got some creative techniques to try with your audience you can also try alliteration, illusion, and chunking to help make your subject line stand out. Also, don't forget about the use of power words at the beginning to try to trigger an emotional or psychological response from your subscribers. Continually be trying new ideas and see what works for your audience. Remember, email marketing is truly hard to beat when it comes to getting a great ROI from your campaigns. Social media doesn't give you the same kind of ROI that email marketing will. And if you'd like to try, regardless of what you're currently using, if you'd like to try Constant Contact free, I just put a link to try it out. It's right there on our website. It's a free trial with no credit card required. Lenore is asking, when you do an A-B test, you said to wait six hours. Do you use the entire audience and then divide in half? Uh, no, you use a small number, a percentage from your audience, and that's how you'll know uh, which one's working best. And then the people who are uh, remaining are the ones who will get an email with the winning subject line. So let me spend a few more minutes on that. Let's say you have a list of 500 people. Let's make it a thousand. We'll make the math a little bit easier. Let's say you have a thousand people on your list and you divide the list and you take 10%, get subject line A, 
10% gets subject line B, that leaves the other 80%. So during the course of that test, 10% get A, 10% get B. And let's say, for instance, subject line B got way more opens than subject line A. Well, the other 80% are going to get the email with the winning subject line. And that helps ensure that you get more opens and more clicks than you might otherwise have gotten. Uh, Marianne says, hey, excited to try these ideas. All my email blasts to subscribers result in a lot of unsubscribes. You may be, uh, you may have learned a couple of things here, Marianne. And uh, by the way, if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. Also, I'd invite you to send me a few of those emails. You see my email address at the bottom of every slide. Send me a couple of those, and I'm happy to give you a, an audit and let you know why I think things are going the way they may be going. Now, I do have a case study for you. Here's uh, one of our clients. They're in Ormond Beach, Florida, not too far from Daytona Beach, and they were using Google AdWords for quite a few years in a row, and their sales were stagnant at $50,000 a year just using Google AdWords. At that point, they were not using email marketing. They came to one of my workshops and started using email marketing and abandoned Google AdWords at that same time. And within six months, they had incremental sales increase by 250,000. And by the end of the following year, their sales had grown to $750,000 a year. So for this client of ours, their ROI is over 350 to one. That's pretty impressive. So we're gonna run into Q&A here. We have about 10 minutes left. And my question for you is, are you ready to take your business to the next level? I mean, are you really ready? Well, then take action and start using email marketing. I dropped a QR code or rather a, a URL in the chat. You can also use that QR code or completelyfreetrial.com to set up a free trial. But I encourage you to set up a call with me. Go to kenisemail.com slash call or uh, click that QR code and you'll get the... Uh, the landing page and just put your name in there and your email address and we'll set up a call. So let's go to Q&A. I see another question here. Uh, David's asking, what do I consider good open and click through rates? Uh, David, a good open rate is on the order of 40 to 50%. The average open rates uh, for most people tend to run about 15 to 18 because they hadn't attended a workshop like this one. For those who have 40 or 50% is what you should be getting. Uh, let's see. Juan's asking, can you please suggest titles for companies that are presenting lines of products to customers B2B? Uh, Juan, you want your subject lines to, within the first two words, connote the value of the product or service. So it might be save time, make more money, clean your house. It could be any number of things. Uh, David's uh, asking, can, can I recommend please. using first name? I'll, uh, just a moment, Garba. Uh, can you recommend using first name on the subject instead of the first line of the body? Yes, I do recommend that. Go ahead, Garba. Yeah, uh, sorry, please, to interrupt you. Uh, just a quick one. This goes to our wonderful attendees. I did posted a 30-second survey about today's webinar. Uh, let me just go ahead and post it for the third time for those of you that didn't see it for the first and the second time. Uh, remember, we at Tempo SPDC, we always cherish your feedbacks, even as it helps us in improving the services we provide to you guys at a low cost. So kindly take 30 seconds of your time and help us to fill out the survey link. You can continue, please. Excellent. And, and I strongly recommend, everybody, that you do take advantage of the SPDC services. Um, they are an amazing group of people. I've done a lot of work with SBDCs, and you're missing out if you don't reach out to the SBDC to uh, take advantage of the services they offer. 
Hey, my name is Ken Countess. I'm managing director of the Countess Group and kenisemail.com. I'd encourage you to call me or text me at uh, the number you see on screen and for sure, uh, shoot an email to me. Let's get something on the calendar. Let me find out how I can be of service to you. There is no sales pitch when we chat. Uh, Erica is asking, what would I recommend for hiring nurses? Um, you want to be sure that the list you have is targeting people who are in the market for a new opportunity. Uh, but Erica, when we talk specifics about specific industries, uh, reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. And I'll be happy to share some ideas with you. One thing you might want to try is uh, using Jasper. And uh, that was in the link that I provided. And you can go ahead and try that free. And just go ahead and ask that AI tool, uh, what's a good way to attract nurses in an email campaign or to write a blog article or something of that nature? Uh, DJ, gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. How do I market my new summer camp? Uh, once again, because we're talking about some specifics on specific industries, I recommend that you give me a call. I'm also going to put a link to our podcast. Uh, we have 52 episodes of the Everything Email podcast. It drops every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern. Um, and there I answer a lot of questions, the kinds of questions people ask about how to get the most out of email marketing. And by the way, if you weren't able to uh, uh, pick up the phone fast enough and schedule that call using the QR code, I just put that link in the chat as well. Uh, for those of you who have uh, already provided your email address to me using any of the uh, tools I presented during this session, you'll be getting an email from me at about 20, 25 minutes from now that ha gives you access to uh, all of these links. <clears throat> and uh, I, with that, I think we're going to close things out. I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us today and taking time out of your day to, to be here. And uh, I appreciate that you've been so engaged. And um, let's see, Tammy says, informative. Thank you so much. And Lenore says, thank you. That was great. Very happy to be of service to all of you. And uh, Garba, I'm going to turn it back to you. Uh, thank you so much, Ken, for a wonderful presentation. I uh, just want to use this opportunity to also thank our wonderful participants, attendees, for keeping a day with us. Thank you guys and do enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. Bye, everybody.